Hey. What's up, everyone? Game Master Force Eight here, and this is a uh, a, a video thing that I want to do. This part's unscripted. I just want to make an improvised introduction segment to segue into the topic of this video, because quite frankly, I was too lazy to come up with an actual live action intro thing. And uh, I mean, yeah. Making intros is hard, guys. Don't, uh, uh. So, um, yeah, I, I noticed that this has been kind of a topic of discussion uh, the past, like, couple of months. I think this is, like, the second month that this has been a thing so far at this point. So, um, yeah, I decided I'd go ahead and give my two cents, because it is an important issue, and I want to spread awareness about it. I know a lot of people know about it already, but, you know, I think the more people that know about this, the better. So... If some of you don't know what I'm talking about, well, hopefully you will know what I'm talking about by the time this video ends. So, uh, let's just, uh, dive right into it. Shall we? That was creepy. <laughs> so, hashtag WTFU. Unless you've been living under a rock these past few weeks, then you probably already know what this hashtag is. Hashtag WTFU, or what is the fair use, is a movement that was started by the popular movie reviewer Doug Walker, aka the Nostalgia Critic. If you aren't familiar with what's been going on lately, then I highly recommend you watch his video on the subject first, because he explains the situation way better than I ever could. But to briefly summarize, basically it's a video that explains in great detail how broken YouTube's copyright system is. Now, if you've been on YouTube for a while now, this probably doesn't surprise you that much. But recently, the copyright system has gone much more rampant with false claims, affecting not only smaller channels, but big ones too. To just name off a few channels who were hit with false copyright claims, well, Doug Walker was one of them as you can probably guess, but we also have other channels like I Hate Everything, Serious Mr. Enter, Lo Lo Lost Paws, I, I, I don't know who that is, but he's another channel who was hit with false claims apparently. Even Team 4 Star was hit with false copyright claims, and that's a channel that has over 2 million subscribers on it. So you can probably tell by now that the copyright system on YouTube is beyond broken and needs some fine-tuning. Or at the very least, to be adjusted ENOUGH so that big corporations can't abuse it to silence criticism. So at this point, you're probably wondering, Game Master, why are you making a Where's the Fair Use video? You never had copyright problems on this channel before. I mean, you also do things in your videos so that you can... Well, yeah, that may be true. For those of you who don't know, I, I myself am very strict with showing copyright material on this channel, and it is because of the super strict copyright system that's currently in place. I saw how strict YouTube is when it comes to copyright, so in turn I made a point to avoid putting certain things in my videos like copyrighted music, movie clips, things like that so I could avoid these types of issues. Heck, why do you think I put all my mood reviews on a completely separate channel? Because I don't want to jeopardize all of my hard work because some big corporation doesn't know what fair use is. And that's how it's always been. Almost since the very beginning, I took precautions to make sure that my channel was as safe from the content ID system as much as possible. But that doesn't mean I don't have my own fair share of copyright craziness. Yes, as much as I try to avoid it, even I sometimes experience some trouble with the copyright system. Granted, most of my copyright trouble usually has to do with claims rather than strikes, in fact I've never actually received a copyright strike once on this channel, but that doesn't make the system any less annoying. Let's go back to the beginning. All the way back to 2011. Once upon a time, I was doing a walkthrough of a game called Wallace and Gromit Fright of the Bumblebees, a point-and-click adventure game developed by Telltale Games, a company who at the time were well known for reviving the adventure game genre before they started making glorified choose your own adventure books. It was a very enjoyable game, and I had a lot of fun making the walkthrough for it. What you probably didn't know was what was happening with the first video of this walkthrough behind the scenes. You see that description down there? The one that said that I re uploaded the video to try to resolve an issue? Well, the issue I was referring to was when I first initially uploaded that video, it actually got a copyright claim. I tried removing the video and re-uploading it to see if that would fix it, but that turned out to not be the case because I just ended up getting the exact same copyright claim. So when that didn't work, I instead decided to do a bit of research on the matter to see what I could do to fix it. Upon further examination of the claim, YouTube told me that a company simply called Wired apparently owned my Wallace and Gromit video. After doing some searching, I discovered that Wired was actually a YouTube channel. A still pretty successful channel, I might add, incredibly famous for doing videos about... 
um, things. So the next step I took was send them a private message, because people still used those in 2011, and see if this was maybe a misunderstanding. When they responded back, they told me they literally had no idea why YouTube put a copyright claim on my video, and said they had absolutely nothing to do with it. Outside of one video that they uploaded about the same game, they had absolutely no connection to Fry of the Bumblebees whatsoever. And so they told me to contact you to get the claim off, which I did. I sent a copyright dispute, and then the claim was removed. Now that doesn't sound too bad, right? It doesn't sound anywhere near as bad as some other copyright horror stories that have been spreading around YouTube. But keep in mind that this little hiccup in the system happened back in 2011. Five years ago. This goes to show that even back then, the copyright system did really weird crud like this. But it doesn't stop there! Remember the Jimmy Neutron PC music I uploaded? Those were cool, right? I also uploaded the Jimmy Neutron vs. Jimmy Neutron soundtrack on here too, but I ended up deleting that. Why, you may ask? Oh, for that reason, they just started getting copyright claims as all. Well. <laughs> it's no biggie. And now it's gotten to the point where a few of the videos from my Jimmy Neutron vs. Jimmy Neutron walkthrough are getting claimed because the same music plays in the background. Now, initially, I thought, you know what? Whatever. I, I guess these were copyright songs and I just didn't realize it. It was bound to happen eventually, right? So. Whatever, I'll let them keep the claims on those videos. However, about a year ago on my Game Music 468 channel where the soundtrack is now being held, a viewer commented and pointed out that most of the songs used in that game are public domain songs. If you don't know what that means, it basically means the songs are copyright free and you can use them in any project you want. You don't need to ask permission, you can use songs whenever you want, no copyright to worry about. Apparently Hot Ideas doesn't know that though, because they thought it was a hot idea to clean my video, ha <laughs> ha! Most of the music in this game is supposed to be public domain, which means I can upload this walkthrough without having to worry about copyright issues from the music. So if that's the case, then why would I be getting copyright claims for a song that apparently doesn't have any copyright attached to it? I'll be honest guys, now that I know about this, I'm seriously considering filing a copyright dispute against these claims. I'm not completely sure yet, since I don't know how rebellious this particular company is, but if the songs are public domain anyway, I see no reason why I can't try to get them removed. So now we flash forward to summer of 2015. This is when the copyright system really started to hit me hard. All because of one particular company who, to this day, is still being an old man about people uploading videos of their games. But more on that later. First, let me get the last of the much... Stranger claims out of the way. Remember a few minutes ago when one of my Wallace and Grummet videos was copyright claimed? That happened again! But yet another company who has no affiliation with Wallace and Grummet or the game. And was claimed last year. A video made in 2011 was copyright claimed in 2015. Because that makes perfect sense. Luckily though, this wasn't, wasn't too bad because I sent a copyright dispute the second I found out about it, and the claim was removed almost immediately, so that's good I suppose. The last strange copyright instance I want to talk about before we get into the big one is a copyright claim I got on one of my The Amazing Spider-Man walkthrough videos on August of 2015. Again. The video was uploaded in 2013, YouTube didn't say there was any issues, and then two years later, suddenly it's all like, nah man, nah, you can't be using that. It was on the final part of my walkthrough for that game, oddly enough, and the claim was for the background music that played during the credits of that game. I assumed this song was just an original track composed just for this game, which is usually pretty safe to upload on YouTube. But after doing a bit of research, I learned that it is actually a licensed song that I guess the company who made the game paid for so they could use it in the game or something, so yeah, admittedly this may have been a slip up on my part, but I figured since I was talking over most of the song anyway, it would probably still be okay to dispute the claim. The company who made the song apparently didn't agree with me though, because they rejected my dispute and the claim stayed on my video. After that, I decided not to pursue the situation any further because it was kind of my own fault for not realizing that the song at the end of the game was actually a copyrighted song. I mean, you guys know me, I'm usually pretty careful when it comes to that sort of thing. But 
hey, obviously I can't keep up with every single little copyrighted thing in existence, right? So, I was bound to make a mistake like that at some point. So, instead of filing another dispute, I decided to let them keep the claim on the video, and then I just left the situation alone after that. Two months later... Good news! Your dispute wasn't reviewed within 30 days, so the copyright claim on your video has now been released. I'm so, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, what? Uh, I mean, not that I'm complaining or anything, I'm glad I don't have him on that video anymore, but I mean, like, I sent them a dispute, and within a few days they said no. You do know what that means, right? That means that the person who owns the song that I mentioned looked at my copyright dispute and said, No, sorry, you can't have that. But now YouTube has told me that they didn't look at my dispute? What? This just goes to show just how broken the system really is. Even when it's the other way around, the copyright system does super weird things like this. I mean, they looked at my dispute, and then they said no. You can't just turn around and say they didn't look at my dispute and that everything's okay. That's just sending me mixed messages. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the company who owns the song just changed their mind about rejecting my dispute, and they just took the claim off the video themselves, and this is just the default message you get when the claim gets removed. If that's the case, then, well, YouTube needs to make a new automated message that actually matches that scenario, because... Seriously, that's just confusing. And if that's not the case, then... Do you see how broken the system is now? But... That's not the end of my little copyright story. No, 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 no. There's still one more chapter I'd like to share with you about my experiences with this incredibly broken system. And lucky for you guys, I've saved the big one for last. So I know I'm a little late to the party in terms of this particular situation, but you might remember that Nintendo was trying to shove this creator's program down Let's Player's throats. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a partnership program. Setting up for it gives you the ability to monetize your videos about Nintendo games. Wanna take a guess what happens if you don't sign up for it? You get copyright claims on all of your Nintendo videos! Every single one of them! Now before I get into what this has to do with where's the fair use, can I just say it seriously baffles me that this is even still a thing? Like. Someone posts in the comments, do any of you even use this program? Because I seriously don't know a single person who has it. But getting back to the topic at hand, Nintendo has pretty much been the main source of my copyright claims as of late. As you know, I've done some walkthroughs of a few Zelda games, which, as you can guess, they tend to be really, really long games. They've mostly been going after my Skyward Sword stuff, but they've also claimed a few of my Ocarina of Time videos as well. And recently, they've been going after my Twilight Princess videos. Conveniently, not too long after Twilight Princess HD came out for the Wii U. Hmm... Now, the reason why I haven't disputed any of these yet is because... Well, they're not going any further than just posting claims. Nintendo has said that they don't mind people sharing their experiences with Nintendo games through videos. They just don't like people making money from those videos. And although I don't necessarily agree with how they've been handling the situation, as long as they're not blatantly taking down videos with their games in them, I sort of don't mind them taking the ad revenue from my videos. I always saw this YouTube thing as more of a hobby anyway, so it really doesn't bother me that much. As long as Nintendo is allowing me to keep the videos up, I'm perfectly fine with them putting claims on my walkthroughs for their games. Now... If that's all they were doing, I wouldn't have any further issues, but guess what? That's not all they're doing! I don't mind it if they claim a video where a Nintendo game is the main focus throughout it. Because it's their game, so they have the right to do what they want. But the problem is, that's not all they're claiming. They're claiming any video that has even a hint of a Nintendo product in it. You know how I use music from different games in the background with my reviews and top 10s, or basically any video I make that's not a walkthrough video? Well, because I sometimes use music from Nintendo games in those videos, that apparently means they own the entire video. Because that's fair, right? Let's take a look at some examples, shall we? For one, they claimed a few of my update videos. Yes, update videos. All because I used a little bit of music from Mario Galaxy in the background. And the most recent fiasco Nintendo is attempting to do with these copyright claims is that now, they're starting to claim the My Thoughts videos as well. 
That's right, the video series that I put the most time and energy into making is not being claimed because, oops, you used a little bit of Twilight Princess music at the end of your review, so we can't make, let you make money off of it now. <laughs> no, this is where I draw the line, okay? I understand why you'd want to claim Let's Plays for your games, because most of them show the game in its entirety. I get it. Even though I don't agree with them on this one, I totally understand the argument. There is a debate to be had there. But claiming a 30 minute review of a game that has no affiliation in making just because a single minute of that 30 minute review has a little bit of Twilight Princess music in it is something that I simply just can't support. Because here's the thing guys, even though they timestamp the part of the video that has their content in it, it still puts a claim on the whole video and removes your ability to make money off of it. So even though it's says only part of the video was claimed, they're still essentially claiming the entire video as their own content. And that is just unacceptable. As of writing the script for this video, I'm currently going through the dispute process for my review of Disney's Toontown Online. I repeat, I'm currently disputing a Nintendo claim for my review of Disney's Toontown Online. My only hope is that they're not one of those companies that just waits out the full 30 days for the dispute to expire, only to reject the dispute on the 29th day just to delay the process of getting the claim off. Now, if something changes during the editing process for this video, I'll put up some text on screen now to let you know the updated status of this particular situation. And depending on how the situation goes, I may dispute the claims on the update videos as well. But for now, I'm just focusing on protecting the review videos right now, cause... Seriously, Nintendo, trying to claim those is where I draw the line. This cannot keep happening. Alright, I, I understand why this system is in place. YouTube is a big site. There are probably millions of people uploading videos on here each and every single day. There's no way to get enough people to monitor that many videos. But it's clear that something needs to change in order to stop big companies from abusing this copyright system. Personally, I don't think you can really fix YouTube's copyright system because, well, it's a robot. H how can you teach a robot that's supposed to detect copyrighted content the difference between copyright infringement and fair use? Like, how do you do that? How do you even begin to teach it that sort of thing, you know? But I do think that something needs to be put in place to give big corporations less incentive to abuse the system. Personally, I agree with Doug's suggestion about putting the money that the video generates into a side account while a copyright dispute is going on, with the winner of the dispute getting the money in the end. That way it doesn't give one side all of the advantages. Now, I am well aware that YouTube did actually respond to this Where's the Fair East scenario a while back, and although I am surprised to see that a real human being who works there actually listened, like, Seriously, that, that was surprising to me. Like, we all know how notorious YouTube is for being the most mute company ever. But as nice as it is that they actually said something about the matter, I don't think it's quite enough. It's easier to say you're gonna do something to fix things than it is to actually do it. It's why I'm hopping onto this Where's the Fair Use bandwagon so late into its journey, because if we just look at this message and say, Oh hey, they responded to us. Yes, they're listening, and then just end the conversation there. Nothing is actually going to get fixed. We need to keep this conversation going if we're ever going to see some actual change to this broken system. I want to be able to post my movie reviews onto this channel without having to worry about some big corporation putting a false copyright claim or a false copyright strike on the video, even though it's supposed to be covered under fair use. I know I made my thoughts of Game Master channel solely for that reason, so that I don't have to worry about that sort of thing. But the fact of the matter is, I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to post things like my Frozen review onto this channel, just like I would with any of my other videos. But I can't, because I'm too afraid of what the copyright system will do if I do that. So let's not end the discussion here. Let's keep it going. Spread the word about what's been going on lately. Make your own video explaining what kind of problems you went through with the copyright system. It's time for us all to band together and let YouTube know that we need to see some changes in order to protect us creators. Come on, guys. Where's the fairies?